Galaxy Z Fold 4, Google Pixel Fold 1. Two absolutely fantastic devices, two of my favorite devices that maybe have ever existed already. I love both of these things so very much. They're fantastic. In this video, I'm going to try and compare and contrast as best as I can. We're going to talk about the hardware. We're going to talk about the software, the multitasking. It's all very good on both of these devices. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and just give you as much data as I can, as many of my opinions as possible, and let you guys kind of come to your own conclusions. So let's start things off in what I believe to be the most obvious place we can, that is with the hardware. There are some similarities. There are some really big differences. So the first big difference, everybody notices immediately. And to me, it is the difference between these devices. Right out of the gate, this is the thing that makes me prefer the Pixel Fold the most. It's the cover display. The cover display on the Z Fold is just too tall. You could say it's too narrow, it's too tall, whatever way you want to look at it. I can't easily reach most of this screen. If I'm sitting down and I'm holding this device, it is simply too difficult for me to reach the top of the screen. I have to shift my grip in a really substantial way. And I know I've gotten this comment so many times, Shane, just use the gesture where you swipe down in the middle of the screen and your notification shade comes down. But that ignores the fact that the notifications are not the only thing that are going to be at the top of the screen. Let's go into an app like Twitter. Let's say I want to get up here to this icon. Well, I can't. And I know you could keep swiping over until you get to it. But again, I, what if I just want to reach up there and touch that icon? I have to use a second hand or I have to do this nonsense. I think I can demonstrate this even better in this way. I've seen other people say to me, well, look at how their settings are set up. They've literally moved everything down to make it easier for you to reach it. And I agree with you. They have done that. But I think that that proves my point for me. They are so aware of how oddly shaped their screen is. They have literally said, we just won't use this whole portion of the screen so that you can reach everything. This is an admission to me that their screen is the wrong aspect ratio. The fact that they have to literally say, we won't use this top bit that you can't easily reach. I think that proves my point. It doesn't actually run counter to my point. With this device, everything is relatively easy within reach, and I really, really do enjoy it for that. If I'm here, I can reach up there so much more easily than I can on the Z Fold. Now, I know that this is something that some people are going to disagree with me on, and that's more than fair. You can prefer whichever setup you like. I'm just telling you what I prefer, and I'm telling you where that difference lies. We also have to point out that the Pixel Fold does obviously fold totally flat, and it is the far thinner device of the two. If you go hinge to hinge here, you can really see how much thinner that device is. Again, they're going to feel very, very different in your pocket, in your hand. Those are some very, very big differences. If we now go, missed the power button. If we now go and open them up, you're going to see another place where they differ quite a bit. But at the same time, they kind of don't differ all that much. Are we both in frame here? So as you can see, the Pixel Fold obviously opens up to landscape. This one opens up in a vertical format. But if we rotate one of them, you can take your pick. Maybe I should rotate the Pixel Fold because uh, it'll take up less space that way. You'll see that the actual total screen real estate is effectively exactly the same. It just comes down to the way that it opens up when you first open it up. And again, this is something that is going to be subjective. It's going to be up to your preference. But personally, I do prefer the landscape orientation here of the Pixel Fold because what this is, is a big phone screen. It's narrow enough that the apps that give you sort of the split panes aren't really giving you like a huge benefit. Let me show you Gmail. Here's a good example. Like it's just big Gmail. Whereas if I open Gmail over here, I'm actually like getting something for the fact that I'm on a bigger screen. It's not just bigger Gmail. Now I think that there's a setting perhaps that you can change and get the dual pane view on this device in this orientation, but it's really skinny and narrow. And I just don't think it really makes sense in that orientation. To me, if I'm going to have a tablet screen, I want to get something out of it. I don't just want bigger versions of applications. However, there's a place where this backfires for the Pixel Fold. Let's go to an app like Twitter, where the fact that it's really just a big phone screen kind of is an advantage here because Twitter fills up the entire screen. Over here, Twitter does not fill up the entire screen. I would have to rotate it around to get a similar experience to that. And there are plenty of apps 
that do this, some of them to disastrous effect. Let's go into whys. Which one is going to be the better experience, this version or this version? Well, clearly, it's the Samsung version of Wise because it's filling the entire screen. Over here, it doesn't really know what to do with this real estate, and that is a bummer, and you're going to run into plenty of apps that do that. But to kind of double down on this, there are also going to be plenty of apps that are going to work really well in the tablet layout. Multimedia video apps in particular, you're going to get a bigger video without having to rotate the device on the Pixel Fold, and that is definitely worth something. Speaking of multimedia, let's talk about these speakers because they're both pretty good, but there are some differences. We're going full volume. Let's do Z Fold 4 first. Girls want some destroy. And let's do Pixel Fold next again, full volume. They're both very loud. In fact, the Pixel Fold might be slightly louder, but the Z Fold has just a little bit more bass, but both of them do a pretty darn good job here. Of course, if you do something like this, you've got Twitter, and now you're going to split screen with Wise, and let's do the same over here. Let's go Twitter, and we're gonna jump straight into the split screen, and then into Wise. I ask you there, which one is the better experience? And I think most people would agree that the Pixel Fold is doing the better job now because of the orientation. These are just too, too they're, they're too skinny, they're too small. I don't like this at all, I've never liked this. You're gonna to wanna to rotate it, this is already there. So there's back and forth, to be had here. There's times where the Z Fold really does things really well. There's times when the Pixel Fold does things really well. And it's gonna come down to what you're after, what you're doing on your phone most of the time and what apps you're using. You may also notice that the taskbar is always visible here on the Z Fold, whereas on the Pixel Fold, you have to do this little short swipe to get into the same sort of thing. From there, the experience is very, very similar. You're dragging an app onto the screen. Although, of course, on the Z Fold, you can drag up a floating window, you can drag up a third split screening window, which are things you cannot do here on the Pixel Fold. So those are definite advantages for the Z Fold 4. A really big thing that I have to kind of interject here and mention is Samsung DeX, right? Samsung, you can plug this thing into a monitor or whatever and have a full desktop environment. Google, you can't really do anything. In fact, there's not even video out over USB-C. So some people, that's going to be like a total deal breaker for the Pixel Fold. Definitely worth mentioning. I don't use DeX all that much at this point anymore. I just have so many devices around that it's like a cool thing to have. But some people use it a ton and would really miss it. Another thing that they both kind of have in common, if we jump into YouTube, let's make sure that our volume is turned all the way down on both of them. I don't know why I'm suddenly getting Joe Rogan stuff popping up in my feed. Let's get rid of that. Let's jump into a couple of videos here. And if we use flex mode, which is this right here, we're going to get a very similar type of experience. This should do this, there it goes. But I think that it's pretty obvious that one of these is just gonna be more usable than the other, right? Like which one of these would you rather be watching this video on in flex mode, the Pixel Fold or the Z Fold 4? Again, sometimes the, the Pixel Fold has the advantage, takes the win. Sometimes the Z Fold 4 takes the win. In my mind, flex mode, Pixel Fold has that in absolute spades. Let's go ahead and close this out and let's go into the camera because both of them do something really, really similar. Once you're tilted up far enough, you get a very similar experience. Although the viewfinder is really small over here, which I don't like. I think that there are, again, different ways of doing this. I kind of like both. I like the fact you can see your most recent photo here. That is pretty cool. I like that your controls are here. Your other controls are here on the Pixel Fold though, you can't see your most recent image, but you have your controls and you have some manual controls here. So again, kind of back and forth on this one, guys. And of course you can also rotate both of them around and use them both like little tabletop things. But in this instance, you're using an absolutely terrible camera. It literally thinks it's dirty and I don't think it is. You're just looking through a screen, dude. It's, it is what it is. And then over here, you have a pretty good selfie camera. So again, very much back and forth. 
Now, my recent screen is kind of customized because I am using a good lock module, but you can see that they do look quite similar with that customization. Let's go ahead and close everything. And I'm gonna show you something that I think is very important. This is the Google Tensor G2. This is the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Had to kind of remember that one. This is the more powerful device on paper, right? Same amount of RAM, all that stuff kind of the same, but the processor, this is faster. And everybody, because of that, is gonna think, well, if the processor's faster, the phone should open up things more quickly. In practice, does that happen? Let's test this out and let's see what we got going on here. Let's start with OneNote. Slight win for the Z Fold 4, but let's make this really nice and similar by jumping to the exact same page so that we're loading into the exact same place on both to keep, okay, and at that point, I don't know which one was first. They were both really, really similar. Let's go home. Let's jump into Feedly, which is how I kind of get my news. Almost identical. Actually, let's go back to OneNote because I need to call something out here. Just look at the way that OneNote kind of loads and look at the way that you can kind of see different amounts of things on both screens. Maybe that's something kind of worth noting too. Anyways, let's get back to this test here. Let's go into the Play Store. Again, guys, they are just absolutely neck and neck. Let's go into Wise, which again, they're going to look very different, but they're doing their jobs at like remarkably similar speeds. Actually, that loaded that last camera quicker. How about YouTube? That was faster. Here's a tough one. How about YouTube TV? This is always one that like takes a while for things to load into. Pixel Fold is faster. What about TikTok? Let's see what kind of random nonsense this loads up. Very, very, very similar as well. And then let's go back to where we started at OneNote. And of course, they're both still in RAM. So performance in like day-to-day -day tasks it's gonna be really, really similar in gaming, like high horsepower tasks, the Z Fold 4 is gonna be faster. Let's talk about battery life for a minute, okay? I use this device a lot, and I've used this device every day since I got it. You can see right now, I got two hours and 21 minutes of screen time, 64% battery. We've been unplugged since about 6 a.m. It is 128, so that would be, what, seven and a half hours, so. I'm on pace for over 15 hours and something like probably six-ish plus hours of screen on time. Let me tell you something. That's almost identical to what I would get with my Z Fold 4. It is remarkably similar battery life. This is a larger battery, but it is less efficient. Battery life is very similar. The Z Fold 4 does charge faster, even though on paper, I believe this should charge faster in reality. This does end up charging a little bit faster for me. There are some settings you can change, turn off adaptive charging and reboot, and it will charge a little bit faster, I believe. But even still, this is the faster charging device. But again, battery life, very, very similar for me. And we can kind of keep doing this same song and dance, right? These things share so many common features, it's not even funny. They both have like their own version of call screening, Bixby text call and Google's call screening. Now in this instance, I prefer Google's version better. I just think that it tends to work better, but you've got something really similar here. They both have their own magic eraser type thing, object eraser, magic eraser. Let's get rid of that one mushroom, boom, there it is. Let's get rid of that mushroom over here. Uh, I guess we need to get the stem too if it'll get up, got the entire thing. Uh, we'll just go with that. I guess we'll just leave the stem. Sometimes one does a better job, sometimes the other one does a better job. But at the end of the day, again, they've got very similar feature sets. I don't know what this thing's doing, so maybe it doesn't have very similar feature sets. <laughs> of course, the Pixel has some cool stuff like now playing, but the Z Fold has the ability to have a different layout on the internal screen and on the cover display, whereas this doesn't. This is your, it's the same thing. This is basically, you can see when I go to move a widget around, these are two pages. So on the cover display, you still just get the same exact two pages. They're just, you know, spread out like that versus like that. With this, you can have two entirely separate layouts. That would be an advantage for the Z Fold.
Of course, we could talk about the cameras, but I've already done that. I've already made an entire video going over the cameras on these two devices. I think that they are both very, very good. They trade blows there as well. Ultra wide's probably better on the Z Fold. Zooming is better on the Pixel Fold. Primary camera is better on the Pixel Fold. Again, these are my opinions. Watch the video, see the samples. Video might be a touch better on the Z Fold, but stabilization is better on the Pixel Fold. It's really close. They're both quite good. It's kind of the moral of the story so far for this video. Honestly, if I had to kind of distill this down, this is what I would say. If the Pixel Fold had the same sort of aspect ratio, the same form factor, as the Z Fold, which is to say it was more narrow and it was taller and the internal display then by virtue of that was also like that. I would say that the Z Fold 4 is probably overall the better device. Everything else is so close. Performance is so close. The cameras are so close. The features are so close. But then there are some differentiating factors there, right? With, you know, charging speed, the heat, the gaming performance. I would say, well, Okay, if all those things are equal, but this thing runs cooler with better gaming performance and faster charging, I'm probably just going to say the Z Fold 4 is the better product. However, and this is subjective, it doesn't have the same form factor. It has a form factor that, to me, makes up for a lot of the shortcomings. This cover display is an absolute revelation for me. It is one of my favorite phones to use, just this cover display. In fact, I would love to see phones of this size just be a thing again. I know people don't really buy them for whatever reason. The iPhone mini wasn't very popular, but I just really think that this is like such a great aspect ratio and size for a screen. I love it, but then what's so amazing is that when I need to multitask or I need to do something bigger, I just open it up and it's a tablet. So what we have with the Z Fold 4, to me, are two kind of awkward screen sizes. We have a cover display here that's really not good for much. It's good for quick text messages, very, very brief things, right? But it's it's awkward, it's strange to me. I find that anytime I need to do anything, I'm just opening the thing. It's probably like 80, 20 time spent tablet display versus cover display. Even like little things, like I'm gonna check like a weather radar. You pull this up and it's like, do you want to use that? Like, it's just, it's so, it's so small. It's so skinny and narrow that I just go, I don't want to use that. So I wind up just opening the thing up every time I use it. So at that point, it's like, why is the cover display even here if I'm always opening it? And then you open it up and what you have is a tablet that's really just a big phone screen. So you're just getting things like big Twitter and big Instagram. Like, you're not really getting like tablet stuff. You're just getting bigger versions of apps. Whereas with this, I feel like I have a phone screen that is very usable. I could just daily drive a phone of this exact size, not even being a tablet. This would be totally fine. And then when I open it, I get a true tablet experience where I can truly multitask in a better way. Where when I do launch apps like Gmail, they are going to be taking advantage of the fact that this is a tablet. And yes, like I said earlier, some apps don't play very well with that. And I would say either split screen those or run those on the cover display and they're going to be just fine there. For every app that doesn't work great on the tablet display, there's probably another app that takes good advantage of the tablet display like you've seen throughout this video. I am fully aware that a lot of you are going to go, Shane, it sounds like there's a lot of compromises with the Pixel Fold, right? Like you, you've admitted that it can't do as many apps in split screen. You've admitted that it runs a little warm. You've admitted that the gaming performance isn't as good. You've admitted that it doesn't charge as fast. And yet you're telling me that all of that is made up for simply by the size to shape the aspect ratio of the device. And to that, I would say you have understood me correctly this entire time. That is exactly how I feel. And you may totally disagree with this, right? You may look at these aspect ratios and say, I prefer Samsung's or I don't care. And if that's the case, then the Z Fold is probably gonna be the better device for you. But this is where I stand on these things. That is how important the aspect ratio, the one hand ability, the cover display, all of that stuff is to me. But those are just my thoughts, guys. Share your ideas and thoughts in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think about all this. I will see you on the next video. Subscribe so that you don't miss it, of course. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.